surprise OPEC plus uh, production uh, cuts uh, first took took uh, I'm sure caught you off guard as well. Yes, it did. I mean, um, it's not it's, uh, the the surprise was in the timing, but maybe the underlying intent was never really too far off. Uh, I mean, we did notice that whenever prices drop below 80, there's a bit of discomfort with the OPEC plus. Uh, in particular, if price drops are sharp, uh, there always has, seems to have been some resistance. Um, it's just that uh, I, I guess at this point of time, um, there is increasing geopolitical risks that arise from it. I mean, to state the obvious, of course. Uh, and the other is if, if markets wanted to rally alongside uh, the usual lift that you get from the energy sector of, of the uh, uh, markets, I, I think that would actually increase tensions because after a while you need to relook at what that means for spending and, and the economic slowdown that comes along with uh, oil prices that don't correspond to the levels of e economic activity. The, the geopolitics, uh, does it, uh, when you take a look at the uh, uh, actual numbers, production cuts, uh, Saudi Arabia down 500,000 barrels, Russia down 500,000 barrels. Uh, does it suggest that, uh, is this another sign that the Saudis are aligning themselves more with Russia? It depends on who you ask. Yeah. If you ask the Saudis, they'll tell you this, is, this has been uh, the plan from day one when they started OPEC+. Plus. Uh, Russia and Saudi have matched production cuts or bumps up. So the, uh, the bump ups that you've seen. So they, they, they are completely aligned in terms of the OPEC plus uh, moves that have been made. So the Saudi would put this across as just being the OPEC plus agreement whereby they match one another rather than work against one another. Uh, but of course, anyone who takes a geopolitical and larger angle on this would say this, this elephant in the room cannot be ignored. Mm. And it could be problematic as well. And we all know that inflation is non-linear. China, the reopening, is starting to get uh, going. The Ukraine-Russia war, it, it, that will continue. Uh, there are inflationary uh, aspects accruing from that with the grain deal and with the weaponization of energy. Could we see a, a secondary wave of inflation at the tail end of this year? I think there are two risks that come to my mind, I mean, distinct risks. One is we will not get that kind of low-hanging fruit of very sharp energy, energy disinflation that many central banks are betting on so that they could moderate policy corresponding to headlines. So it becomes more inconvenient for policy. At the end of the year, it becomes a binary risk. Either you get really sticky energy prices and hence uh, elevated inflation that, that causes a lot more discomfort, or along the way, because of a policy misstep, you get a much sharper economic downturn. By the time you get into uh, disinflation proper, uh, mainly because energy prices are hypersensitive to an actual economic downturn, but that is cold relief by then.